Good day, learners! In the previous lesson, you have learned how light interacts with different materials. You also learned that optics is a study of refraction which refers to the bending of light as it passes through different materials. Reflection which refers to the bouncing back of light when it hits an object. Absorption that refers to a material's taking in of light and reflecting it back. And transmission that refers to the passing of light through some materials. This time, you will learn the conditions necessary to make a bulb light up. Look around your house. How many appliances do you see? How many are currently plugged into your wall outlets? Most households have several devices that make use of electricity. The number of appliances that you have at home shows how important electricity is in our daily lives. How does electricity flow to your appliances? Two conditions must be met in order for electricity to flow. First, there must be a source of electricity. Second, there must be a complete path for the electricity to flow through. Let's look at this picture. This is an electrical circuit. It has four parts. A source, which is a battery in this picture, light bulb, wires, and switch. Bulb. It helps detect current flowing through the circuit by lighting up. While the battery provides energy to the components in the circuit. While wires provide a path through which current can flow from one end of a battery to the other. And switch can make the circuits of the lens in your homes open or closed. Here's a picture of an open circuit. As you can see, there is a gap or no complete path from one end of the circuit to the other end. For this reason, electricity does not flow. While in this next picture, a wire is attached to the negative end of the battery while the other wire is attached to the positive end. Both wires are attached to the bulb. Such a circuit is called a closed circuit. A closed circuit makes the bulb light up because the path of electricity is complete, allowing electricity to flow through it. To understand better the difference between open circuit and closed circuit, you may refer in this figure. That ends our lesson for today. I hope you learned something from the discussion. Kita kids in the next lessons. Until next time, goodbye!